For over a decade, Chudat has been considered a top-level contender in the competitive Melee community, but he took this to new heights in 2017, where he's considered the 7th best in the world on the 2017 Summer Power Rankings. But his return to the top 10 wasn't able to carry over to the end of year rankings, as a rough second half of the year led him to be ranked very respectably at 11th. And this downward trend has continued even further since the start of 2018, where he's only been able to beat 3 top 100 players in 5 months, and has taken tons of bad losses to players that a top 20 player should easily beat. So that begs the question, exactly how far has Chudat fallen? To figure this out, we're first going to review his placements at the events he has attended so far this year. Then we're going to take a look at how far he has fallen by comparing him to other top level Ice Climbers players to see if he's even currently still the best Ices player in the world, and then compare him to other fringe top 50 players to see if he has a resume that is able to stand up to them. So without further ado, let's take a look at Chu's first event of the year, Genesis 5. Here he took wins off of Australia's Spud and New York's Vortex, who are both up and coming players who are most likely going to be ranked on this year's top 100. And while beating these solid players is good, it really doesn't outweigh losing O2 to Moki, who had complete control during their set. His loss to Santi isn't nearly as bad as his first, especially with how solid of a year Santi's had, but it's still not a great look for the 11th best in the world. After Genesis, Chu didn't attend any larger events until near the end of February, where he went to Xanadu end of an error and only placed third. Losing to Lod isn't bad at all, especially for how tough the Peach matchup is for Ices, but again losing to another top 80 plus ranked player made a lot of people think that this would start to be a trend for Chu. So we waited another month to find out if that was the case, and hoped that we would get an answer at Full Bloom 4. And there we got a semi-positive sign as Chu took an expected loss against Shroomed and then was eliminated by Crush early on in Losers due to an upset by HT. He also was able to beat Bobby Frizz during his short tournament life, which finally allowed him to put his first top 100 win of the year on the board. But the real glimmer of hope for Chudat fans came just a week later where he traveled to Germany for Respawn 6 and was able to win the whole tournament. He did lose his first set that he played against Ice at the event, but when Chu met him again in Grand Finals, it looked nearly hopeless for Ice. It finally appeared that Chu had been able to catch his footing and stop his descent down the ranks somewhere around the 30 to 40s with this win. Well, at least catch his descent until May 13th's Pound Underground. Here he washed away most of the slight reparations he was able to do across his last two events with two bad losses. His first came from fellow MDVA resident who currently stands at 10th on the PR, Bobom, who just barely closed out the set in a last stock situation. The second loss against Milkman was also fairly close, but Chudat threw away solid leads during the last two games on Final Destination with really sloppy play. And that's been Chudat's roller coaster of a year so far. But understanding the quality of someone's performances is hard when just looking at one player, so let's compare his quality of wins and losses to two of the best Ice Climbers players around, Army and Diskid Boogie. When looking at all of the players' results, it's clear that 2018 has not been a great year for Ice Climbers, especially with the news that both Wobbles and Nintendude are giving up the character. But in comparison to each other, I think it's clear that ARMY has had the best year out of the three, especially with wins over Cobol and Chillin' Dude, both of who are known to be some of the best at the Ices matchup. As for comparing Chu to Dizkid, it's pretty tough of a call either way, but I think I'd give the slight edge to Chu for his victory and wins at Respawn, especially with Dizkid's recent shift in focus away from singles. So as of now, Chu isn't the highest ranked Ices player in the world, but is he at least a top 50 player? This is a lot more difficult to judge, because there's no official list that ranks that high, but let's look at the years of a couple players around that mark, Rishi and Captain Face Roll. Before we jump into comparing these players, I just wanted to mention how hard it was to find two good comparison points for Chudat. There's a handful of reasons behind it, such as many players being fairly inactive so far this year, and there being a lack of major events, but in any case, it's a good sign for Chudat remaining as a part of the top 50 because of how difficult it can potentially be to find 50 players with better resumes to fill that spot. So with that being said, 
Let's compare these results. Captain Faceworld's record this year is a textbook example of what a top 30 to around 50 player's resume should look like. They beat the players that are ranked lower than them, and for the most part, only lose to players ranked higher than them. And with a solid resume like that, it's clear he's had a better and much more stable year than Chudat by a long shot. Rishi, on the other hand, has taken a handful of bad losses, much like Chu has. The three unranked players he lost to are all pretty solid contenders for 2018's top 100, but this doesn't excuse these losses. However, what does help ease those losses is the variety of solid wins he has against players like Kalamazoo, Captain Smuckers, and Absent Page, who've had a much better year than their 2017 rank would lead you to believe. So with that being said, and only having those two comparison points, do I think Chu has fallen out of the top 50? He's close? But I don't think he's there just yet. Just giving a quick glance over it, there are just not enough players with solid resumes to fill up the top 50, and his win at Respawn 6 gave him the top 100 wins he desperately needed to stay in the conversation. Moving forward, I'm interested to see if Chu is able to make any significant runs at the Super Majors he attends during the summer and turn around his year, but we're going to have to wait and see what happens. And yeah, that's about it for this video. I'd love to hear where you guys think Chu is currently. I think that 40 to 50 range is a good solid spot for him. It's just so hard to find. Uh, I can I can probably give you like 35 players that I definitely think are better than Chu without looking it up. But finding that last 15 is really difficult with the lacking of events. I mean, if you, you want to count like locals and like every single tournament that every single person has attended, Maybe you could find the people to fill in there, but also getting in all those locals They're gonna have a lot of players who have a lot of bad losses that wouldn't be normally considered in the grand scheme of things in the top 100 But if you want to go above and beyond and give me a list of 50 players you think are currently better than you I would love to see that down in the comments below and see if you're able to defend that That'd be really dope to see if you want more discussion on Melee beyond this, uh, the Melee Stats podcast, which we do every Tuesday night, even though it's probably going to be moving its time slot, uh, which is also something you'll hear about more soon about why that's happening and something cool that your your fellow, fellow neighborhood Saves Untitled is getting involved in, but I can't tell you just yet until it's officially announced, but that, that's something cool coming up. Uh, but at least for tonight, Tuesday night, uh, at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the Melee Stats Podcast, it'll be me, Edwin, and Firepuff, um, as of now, that's what the plan is uh, the night before. Uh, so if, if you want to hear a bunch of guys talk about Melee, it's super fun and really interesting. And if you're not able to tune in for the live stream, uh, Wednesday around like 12-ish, the VOD will be uploaded. So you can watch that too. Also, uh, I, the summer has started to give you like a little update on my life. So that's why it might sound a little bit different. But now I'm able to do two videos a week because I'm going to try to do YouTube full time this summer. So Thursday, be on the lookout for a video on Gommel and who I think can win and all that jazz. And to make sure you don't miss out on that video, subscribe down below. Sometimes the YouTube sub boxes suck. So if it doesn't come to you here, you can follow me over on Twitter. And yeah, that's about it. I've been Saves Untitled. Hopefully I'll see you tonight for the Made of Stats podcast. And I will see you guys next time. <laughs>